Do you ever watch the pros make a huge play with the sheriff and think, I want to do that? Then you hop into a rank game and every ego round you face the sad reality that you aren't a pro? What is going on, Pro Gods family? It's your host, Sergeant Frost, and I'll be honest, I try to be a hero with the sheriff way too much. Although the gun has a high potential for insane plays, sometimes I have trouble finding the right fights or I'm just not feeling the headshots. That's why today, we're going to be talking about some great alternatives that high elo players like to lean on to consistently maximize their impact, and why you should reconsider when you're thinking about buying the sheriff. Do you know what pro player has been a monster with the sheriff recently? The one and only tens. Tens has been tearing up the competition this week with the Sentinels in VCT Challengers 2 qualifiers. While Tens is dominating the pro scene, he is also trying to spread his knowledge about how to improve in Valorant as quickly as he did. That's why he recently teamed up with Pro Guides Valorant to make an all-encompassing course that will teach you the fundamentals that create a complete player. This course will give you all the gameplay basics and the insights that Tens uses to dominate his competition on a daily basis, whether it's in pro matches or rank play. Head over to ProGuides.com to take advantage of this one-of-a-kind opportunity to learn from the aim god himself. Maybe after getting an in-detail taste of what it takes to be a player of his caliber, you can master the sheriff or marshal like he already has. Now, let's jump right into the video. Before we get into the plethora of alternatives that people often disregard or outright forget, let's first talk about the elephant in the room, the sheriff. At 800 credits, it's a great option for those looking for a highly skilled weapon. Its one-shot headshot at close to medium range makes it a particularly dangerous weapon against all enemies. However, the skill required to consistently get value out of this weapon is often overlooked. Precision is absolutely necessary with the Sheriff, and missing the initial headshot will often get you killed. The Sheriff has potential for some huge impact, but it's also very punishing to miss with. I recommend for you Sheriff lovers to try and take longer range engagements with this gun, as fully auto weapons or close range weapons like the Judge and Bucky will typically outmatch you unless you instantly headshot them. The trick to mastering this weapon is discipline. If you fire the Sheriff too quickly, the shots will go everywhere and you'll be dead in no time. You absolutely need to be going for those headshots, and if you're having trouble, this is where you'd want to give some of the alternatives a shot. Another tip is to stay on your toes. Unlike an automatic weapon, you have the comfort of taking a quick shot and repositioning. Using your movement can often be the deciding factor on winning a duel when the enemy has a better weapon than you. Try and take a shot, strafe, take a shot, rinse, and repeat. Strafing is great because it also helps in building a habit that keeps you harder to hit or kill, but it also helps you from staying still and committing too hard to a fight. Remember, the sheriff has a specific rhythm to its shots. You can't shoot it too fast or you'll end up painting a picture around your enemy's body. Before we move on, let's head into our question of the day. Today's question is, if you had to pick an alternative to the Sheriff, what would you use and why? In my personal opinion, I find the most success using the Marshall and the Spectre because of how versatile they are as such low economy weapons. Let us know what your favorite low econ weapon is in the comment section down below. Now, let's get right back into the video. The price increase of the Frenzy from 400 credits to 500 has largely lowered its impact on pistol rounds. Many agents who would have loved to run the Frenzy plus armor are now opting for other options as it also limits what type of utility they can purchase. However, what most forget is that the Frenzy stats itself have not been touched. It's still a solid option for 500 credits if you're trying to get a kill without spending a ton of money. On the flip side of the Sheriff, the precision and the range aren't the strong suits here. You want to treat the Frenzy as a mini SMG. Look to close the distance before engaging and don't be afraid to run and spray with this weapon. It's extremely deadly at close range and it can secure you kills that the Sheriff couldn't dream of doing. And it can do it much more easily too. The trick to utilizing the Frenzy well is the running spray mechanic. If you're not sure how this works, feel free to go into the range and try running around and spraying down bots with the Frenzy. You will be presently surprised how accurate it is. And if you use this mechanic at the right range, you'll be zooming past your enemy in a flash as they fumble to track your movement, all while you're destroying their health pool. At 500 credits, you would be hard pressed to find anything as high value and reliable as the Frenzy in today's meta. Many of you guys would wonder if the Bucky is even good anymore after the nerfs. Maybe you think it's not worth the money and shouldn't be bought. Well, I'm here to inform you that it's still a solid option if you pick it for the right scenario. Riot's changes to the Bucky weakened its long range prowess, but honed in on specializing the shotgun for close range encounters. Although you might not be able to one shot your opponents from 15 meters away with a single right click, don't forget that the Bucky is still a beast up close. The Bucky still one shots at close range with the left click, so if you think you can get away with that range, nothing else competes with it except the Judge. But for almost double credits, the Judge isn't a crazy upgrade in comparison. It's pretty much just a semi-auto version of the Bucky with the changes. I personally recommend the Bucky on the defender side as it's easy to choose your range of engagement. Think about the spots that the enemy might run into where they will be forced to contest your close range Bucky shots. Some areas that work well for me are Garage on Haven and A Short, Hookah and U-Haul on Bind, Catwalk on Ascent, and Vents and Mail on Split among many others. Remember that just because the right click is nerfed doesn't mean the Bucky still isn't devastating when used for close quarters combat. The Spectre has been a tried and true weapon that has stood the test of time and for a good reason. At 1600 credits, this is arguably the most flexible weapon at this price range. 
It's just cheap enough to allow you to sometimes buy Spectre and Light and Heavy Shields, while still allowing you to be able to full buy the following round. Unlike the Frenzy, Sheriff, or Bucky that we previously mentioned, the Spectre can fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with weapons like the Phantom and Vandal with more freedom. The best way to describe this weapon is an easier to use Frenzy with a bigger magazine and lower recoil. You will similarly want to abuse its running accuracy when fighting at super close ranges, but it's no slouch when used in standard fashion. If you're able to get the initial headshot dink, the flinch alone can allow you to secure subsequent shots and turn into a kill. And because it has a bigger magazine, you can feasibly secure multi-kills and have more freedom to play riskier positions. There's nothing quite as flexible as the Spectre. And although you might use it often, don't forget that sometimes those constant share of purchases could prevent you from buying half shield Spectre later throughout the game. I think the Ares is the most slept on half buy weapon in the game, and I completely understand why. Many people will default to the Spectre when purchasing on half buys, and the Ares is often overshadowed by its bigger brother, the Odin. On top of that, the Ares does struggle at those closer ranges, so you have to put more thought in when using the Ares. But if you're able to utilize the Ares' strengths of range and high bullet penetration, you will find that this is a very strong weapon. The Ares is great when you aim down sights at longer ranges, due to its ramping fast rate of fire. Trying to fight at closer ranges though will often result in you getting outclassed because the Ares needs time to ramp up its rate of fire. If you also use the Ares to wall bank spots, you'll be able to get cheeky damage and kills that people don't expect. So if you want to play longer ranges or try to wall bang players more, the Ares is easily a great choice. For wall banging, the great spots are Garage on Haven and B Main on Ascent for example. Those are the obvious ones, but if you want to learn more about specific wall bangs, feel free to go visit our website at ProGuides.com. Our coaches would be happy to chat with you and show you some great wall bangs that can help you in your ranked games. Alright guys, now that the Stinger is hands down the best gun for every situation, just kidding. Out of all the other options, the Stinger has fallen heavily out of favor ever since the nerfs. I don't know about you guys, but I don't really want to use a gun that sends me spinning in circles as soon as I start shooting. I guess there is an argument that can be made that the Stinger is still a potent tool at close range, but I think its wild recoil and inability to multi-frag reliably just makes it a harder to use Bucky or a less reliable Frenzy. As such, I would not suggest using this gun as an alternative. I would rather just miss with the Sheriff than tilt myself by tagging the wall for 300 damage when I try to shoot an enemy at mid-range. Moving on, I used to be a little hesitant about this gun, but now is the first time I'd ever recommend using the Marshal. With the Bucky feeling like an actual shotgun, and the Stinger being nerfed hard while the other weapons are getting changed to fit their specific role, the Marshal is one of the few cheap weapons that actually has received buffs. If you'd like to play long range and want a more focused Sheriff, this is the weapon for you. Holding down spots like C-Long on Haven, B long on bind, and showers on bind are some easy examples to understand where you should be looking to take this sniper. Range is king here folks, so make sure you're keeping your distance when you can to better utilize the scope and one shot potential. The closer your fights are, the less suitable this weapon is for your situation. With the increased scope magnification, the marshal feels like a scout from Counter Strike which I'm all for. This weapon was meant to be played for range, and now the scope magnification better enables that playstyle. But hey, if you don't believe me, watch how Tenz uses this weapon, and maybe he'll convince you to try this weapon out more often. For 200 credits, the Shorty used to be the king of value. Its one-shot potential at close range has been severely tuned back and it's much harder to find those opportunities anymore. Now, you pretty much need to barrel stuff your opponent to secure a one-shot kill. More often than not, you'll end up hitting your opponents with this gun for 60 to 120 damage and you'll be met with an untimely death. You're going to want to buy the Shorty if your money is tight or if you think spending the extra credits isn't worth it for that round. Just like the Bucky, the Shorty needs to be played around close range. But for 200 credits, it's still insanely funny that you can kill someone that has a full loadout with this weapon. I wouldn't personally recommend the Shorty often, but this can be a great weapon in hyper-specific situations, so don't forget that it exists, because sometimes I do. As silly as it may sound, the classic is zero credits, and it can often be the best weapon a lot of the time. Have you not seen those ridiculous right-click kills that people often get? Tell me a Sheriff is better than turning a corner and one-bursting a guy up close with the right-click. I see a lot of players constantly purchase the Sheriff and get little to no value out of it. Sometimes, even just using a classic while using the rest of your cash for some extra utility can be much stronger, especially if you're playing an agent with strong fighting utility like Phoenix, Breach, Astra, Raze, and Sky. Sometimes the weapon really isn't the issue, because the classic is entirely free and a great weapon for that price. Having utility can sometimes make the real difference on those eco rounds. Don't forget that the jumping right click still works with the classic. Doing this over boxes or around corners at close range can be very devastating. Couple this with an ability or two and you're a lot scarier than you might originally think. And if all else fails, at least you'll be saving credits. And the more credits you save over multiple rounds, the better and more frequent your full buys will be. If you find that you're constantly broke, it may be because you're constantly buying those sheriffs even when it's not doing you justice. What do you guys think? Are you going to put that sheriff down and try out some of the alternatives? If not, that's okay too. Sometimes I like to test my limits as well. The point of this video wasn't to make you quit using the sheriff, but to be aware of the different alternatives and to let you choose a gun that best benefits your needs. 
Valorant is a game that is constantly changing. Whether that be new content, agents, changes to weapons, or overall meta shifts, it's exciting to adapt to every situation. We hope that this video helps you guys learn about some of the alternatives to the Sheriff that you can bring on your journey while climbing the ranks. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and click that bell notification icon to keep up to date with all the latest Valorant news, guides, and updates. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and good luck on the grind. I'll see you guys in the next one.